This episode of Off The Script is brought to you by WrestleCrate. WrestleCrate is a monthly pro wrestling based subscription service and each month subscribers will receive a new pro wrestling themed mystery crate. To go and subscribe, please go and visit their website at www.wrestlecrate.com and on Twitter at WrestleCrates. <laughs> What is going on, guys? JD from New York here, and this is WWE Off The Script, episode number 61, part number one, to start your weekend off the right fucking way, man. If you guys are new here, I have no idea what you are waiting for. Hit that subscribe button because I'm going to fucking blow your mind right now. I'm going to blow your fucking mind. This is, without question, the number one fucking source and I just don't say that, man. It's written right in the fucking layout of this show. The best damn source for WWE news and rumors. That's all you need to know. This is Off The Script, episode number 61, part number one, man. Thank you for joining me on this Friday, wherever you may be. Thank you for watching Off The Script. Thank you for supporting Off The Script. And I got a loaded fucking show for you guys today. All right, before I get into that... If you missed Off The Script last weekend, links will be down below. I did not do a Monday Night Raw review because Monday Night Raw sucked dick, as always. And it was a taped show, and I knew the fucking spoilers before the event took place. I didn't even care, and it came off like shit on TV. There were some decent parts here and there, but it's not worthy of a review. And finally, if you guys are still contemplating Wrestle Crates, man, April 19th is the last day to sign up. Go and sign up for Wrestle Crates, man. That's www.wrestlecrate.com. And if you guys want to go follow them on Twitter, at Wrestle Crates, April 19th is the last day to sign up for the first shipment, which will begin shipping on April 25th, man. Go and subscribe if you guys want a boatload of wrestling awesomeness delivered to your front step, man. It's gonna be fucking great, and I'm gonna be doing boxings right here, alright? Enough of that! Enough of that, man. You guys are here for news, and I got a huge fucking story all over the internet this week. Daniel Bryan injured once again. What is going on? What's going on with his future? Will he be competing at Extreme Rules against Wade Barrett in defense of his Intercontinental Championship? Let's find out, man. A new report. From Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez of the Wrestling Observer Radio Show and F4WOnline.com claims that WWE Intercontinental Champion Daniel Bryan's health is once again in question and WWE is trying their best to protect him. Bryan suffered injuries that required surgery in 2014 before he returned to action at the beginning of 2015 when he announced he will be in the 2015 Royal Rumble. Brian was out of action for nearly eight months due to this injury, making his in-ring return during the first Thursday edition of SmackDown in January of this year. While it was expected that Brian would likely have to change his wrestling style to accommodate his neck injury... Brian has gone full speed since his return on January 15th, reportedly leading to further complications of his condition. The report claims that Brian is actually in poor condition, which is why he hasn't been competing on Monday Night Raw in recent weeks. While he's worked dark matches and in some bouts on SmackDown, WWE is putting him in six-man tag matches... Uh, to allow him to get in, hit a few moves, and then get out. Apparently, the shot from Sheamus that left Brian with staples and stitches in his forehead a couple of weeks ago added to the complications, which is why Brian was only used in a backstage segment with Kane during the April 13th edition, which was this Monday, on Monday Night Raw. Brian did appear during the dark match in the O2 Arena in London, after the cameras went off the air, but was again in a six-man tag so that he wasn't working a full 15 to 20 minute match. WWE wants Brian to be around for a very long time, and so does its fans. And loves the prestige that he's adding to the WWE Intercontinental Championship by holding it, but they are currently worried about his longevity. 
The offices of WWE have confirmed that WWE Intercontinental Champion Daniel Bryan has been removed from the remainder of the current WWE European Tour that began on April 10th and will run until April 20th. All right. As reported, Bryan was removed from the tour in order to protect his health. The latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Radio Show revealed that Bryan's health is currently in question following his return to WWE on January 15th. Bryan is reportedly ailing from further complications in regards to injuries he sustained in 2014, which he underwent neck surgery to try and fix in May of 2014. PWInsider.com reports that WWE has provided them with a statement regarding Brian's removal from upcoming WWE live events. And I quote as the statement reads, Daniel Bryan has been pulled from the remainder of the UK tour as a precautionary measure. Seemingly, WWE is confirming that Bryan is not 100% and they are keeping him from action as a precautionary measure. The company doesn't want Brian becoming permanently injured from injuries sustained while working inside of a WWE ring. What this means for the future of Brian right now is uncertain. Though, if Bad News Barrett captures the WWE Intercontinental Championship from Brian at Extreme Rules, one would have to believe that Brian's career could be in jeopardy. This is big, big fucking news. Now, I'm not going to say uh, that I want Brian to continue to wrestle because that would be absolutely foolish of me and absolutely selfish of me to even say. I want Brian at 100%. Whether or not he's going to be at 100% ever again in his career, nobody knows. Do I think he rushed back from injury? No. Do I think this is a career-threatening injury? No. If WWE... And it's doctors were on their game. They would never let Daniel Bryan back in the ring if this was a neck injury. They would never allow him to compete in the ring if this was a neck injury, okay? WWE takes all the measures that they should be taking to prevent their superstars from having, to, from having any head trauma, any neck injuries, etc., etc. I do not think this is a neck injury injury, uh, and it's not related to his neck or his previous uh, surgery and his rehabilitation with his neck. What I do think, I think this may have to do with his elbow. Because remember, when I reported here on Off The Script, Daniel Bryan was rumored to have Tommy John surgery, okay? And I read reports that Bryan was feeling discomfort in his arm and his elbow. Remember, all the reports that went out, Bryan was having very, very uh, a very difficult time uh, gaining strength in his arm due to all the complications from the neck. The neck ended up being alright, but he couldn't get strength back in his arm. And his arm was limp. And the WWE didn't know whether or not he would be able to make the Royal Rumble. But miraculously, he comes out on Monday Night Raw and says that he will be in the Rumble. And everybody went crazy, man. It was a great fucking moment for all because we all thought Daniel Bryan was all going to come out and announce that he's going to be done with professional wrestling. That did not happen. So what I see happening here is that the WWE is taking precautionary measures for his elbow. I do not think his neck is in danger, okay? Though, when I see him wrestle, I am always watching what is going on with his neck, man. The shots that he takes from Luke Harper, the fucking clotheslines he's taken, etc., etc., it scares the shit out of me, man. It scares the shit out of me because I know that type of, of injury is... It's very fragile. You got to be careful about it. But, listen, if the WWE was upset, if the WWE was, you know, uh, taking precautionary measures about Daniel Bryan and they thought it was his neck, why would they put him in a ladder match at WrestleMania 30, uh, 31 uh, against six other guys in one of the most dangerous spots a wrestler could be in, man? A, a ladder match. That's not uh, a fucking walk in the park. You know, it's, it's not a joke. Okay, so I don't think if Brian's neck was injured, they would put him in a ladder match and have anything happen to him there. I do think it's the elbow. If I hear anything else regarding Daniel Bryan, I will certainly let you guys know right here on Off The Script. 
As far as his match goes with Wade Barrett at Extreme Rules, I don't know what is going on, man. I really don't know. We got a few weeks till Extreme Rules. Maybe Brian will be okay to go uh, at that point. But right now, it is smart of WWE to keep him off TV. Keep him, actually not keep him off TV, but keep him out of in-ring action. And uh, maybe he will be okay, like I said, for Extreme Rules. So, good thing WWE is doing that and taking precautionary measures. But like I said, I do think it is the elbow and not the neck, alright? But as of right now, the Extreme Rules broadcast um, on the WWE Network, live from the Allstate Arena in Chicago, should be a, a decent show, simply because the Chicago crowd is fucking amazing, alright? Uh, here, uh, here is the card right now as follows. WWE World Heavyweight Championship Steel Cage RKO is banned. So stupid. Seth Rollins, the champion, going against Randy Orton. Okay. United States Championship Russian Chain Match. And if you guys don't know what a Russian Chain Match is, I will fill you in in just a couple of seconds. John Cena, champion versus Rusev, getting his championship rematch with Lana at Extreme Rules. As of right now, until I hear further word, Intercontinental Championship match, Daniel Bryan defending his belt against Bad News Barrett. Divas Championship match, Nikki Bella right now going against Paige, possibly going to be switched with Naomi with Paige being injured. And I have uh, news on that as well. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be in this episode or Saturday's episode, but I do have news on why Naomi... Uh, probably uh, turned heel on the WWE Universe, so I got news on that as well. Uh, last man standing match, Big Show versus Roman Reigns, and I'm falling asleep as I fucking tell you. There's a Big Show match with Roman Reigns at Extreme Rules. Awful. Awful, man. Roman Reigns was going against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Now you're putting in a match against the Big Show? Yeah, like anyone's gonna give a fuck about that match. Give me a fucking break. You know what I'll be doing during that match? I'll be taking a piss. I'll be gathering my snacks. I'll be making sure my beers are nice and cold. Probably popping open a couple. Who gives a fuck about a last man standing? Who gives a fuck about the Big Show, man? Really? Really? If you do, please, go get examined, because you obviously have fucking problems, and look, look, I don't know. This is extreme rules, people. Extreme rules. What match have I told you right now is extreme? Nothing. Nothing. Kiss my arse match. Loser kisses the ass of the winner. Yeah, real extreme, WWE. Sheamus versus Dolph Ziggler in a Kiss My Arse match. Yeah. As of right now, I would like to throw my two cents in and lobby for WWE to change this fucking pay-per-view name, man. There's nothing extreme about this pay-per-view. It's a fucking long-forgotten idea, man. Extreme rules. Nobody gives a fuck about extreme anymore. If you want to get extreme... Go back and watch the WWE Network and see how extreme really was, man. You want to see extreme? Go watch the One Night Stands. Go watch ECW. Go watch fucking, uh, go watch NXT. NXT is more extreme than fucking WWE, man, and Extreme Rules pay-per-view. This is fucking ridiculous. Really. They should really change the fucking name of Extreme Rules, man. Guarantee you we don't see one ounce of blood at Extreme Rules supposed to be extreme, right? I want to see chains. I want to see ladders. I want to see fucking tables, chairs. I want to see barbed wire. You know, this is the one night of the year where you get to see all that stuff, and it's advertised in the name, and it's, it's extreme rules. Anything goes. You're not going to see any of that stuff, uh, any of that shit in a Big Show Roman Reigns match. You're not going to see any of that shit in a Kiss My Arse match, which should be good. It'll be good, but the stipulation is fucking awful. Nikki Bella versus Naomi. Yeah, okay, how many botches are we going to see in that one? Daniel Bryan versus Bad News Barrett. The one guy I want to see might not even be on the pay-per-view. Rusev versus John Cena will be okay because I like the way these two mingle and interact. It should be good. Then you got Seth Rollins versus Randy Orton in a steel cage match. Steel cage match, man. 
supposed to keep the outside parties, uh, exactly, on the outside, but, uh, we all know that J&J &J Security and Kane and this one and that one and my fucking sister and her fucking, uh, my, my aunt and my uncle, they're all gonna be in the fucking ring together, man, everybody's gonna be having a fucking huge party in the ring, and the steel cage match stipulation will make you and me look like a complete fucking buffoon. That's all I gotta say about that, and that's my rant for the fucking evening, man. Extreme Rules is not extreme. Change the fucking pay-per-view name and get rid of it because WWE, realistically, is uh, marketing something and it's false advertising, okay? They're marketing something that they will not do. They're not gonna get extreme. It's gonna be fucking extreme for the PG goons out there uh, who think this is extreme. That's not extreme, man. If you want extreme, go watch uh, Taz and Bam Bam Bigelow and Sabu, RVD, Shane Douglas, in old school ECW, man. That's the way it was done, alright? Moving on, I have news on Fandango. PWInsider.com has provided some backstage news on Fandango's face turn that began during the April 13th edition of Monday Night Raw. During the program, Fandango came out to his heel entrance theme, which was awful, by the way. It was fucking terrible. They ruined his entire gimmick, which I thought, listen, they get, they had aspects of his gimmick right. They had aspects of his gimmick right, but then all of a sudden they changed his theme, man. He was known and admired and recognized for his theme. Now, that might not be a good thing, but they got aspects of his character right. He was a little bit more edgy. He was a little bit more uh, brutal in the ring. He was a little bit more, you know what? I'm gonna kick this fucking guy's ass, dance along the way, and move and go on to the next guy. But they failed on this on this heel turn, right? They failed on this more uh, tough and rough Fandango. So during the program, Fandango came out to his heel entrance music alongside Rosa Mendez. However, after losing to Stardust pretty quickly in their match, Fandango appeared to dump Mendez and turn face. Good for him. The report claims that WWE has wanted to turn Fandango babyface after WrestleMania. And decided to do so in London, England as his babyface entrance theme, Cha Cha La La, made it to number one on the UK iTunes music charts the week following WrestleMania 29. It's pretty interesting. When Fandangoing became a thing, the international crowd was present for WrestleMania 29 and the, and the edition of Monday Night Raw that followed the event gravitated to the theme, dancing and humming uh, as they left the arena, causing a viral internet sensation. I don't know if it was viral, I don't know if it was an internet sensation, but the WWE Universe seemed to be enjoying themselves. Alright, WWE wanted to capitalize on his popularity in the UK and decided to turn Fandango babyface at the O2 Arena on April 13th. While, um, what Fandango's upcoming program looks like is uncertain, expect him to appear as a face using Cha Cha La La during the April 14th tapings for SmackDown in the UK as well. Fandango has not yet held any championship gold in WWE and could begin working towards entering the Intercontinental Championship picture. However, with Daniel Bryan holding the strap and John Cena holding the US title, both belts have been elevated to a higher prestige than just a hot potato mid-cart title like they were over the last six years. Where Fandango goes from here is the question, though it's pretty likely Fandangoing may lead him to better things or just a simple plateau to get things started. Now, what do I think of Fanta uh, Fandango's face turn? I like it. I think Johnny Curtis is excellent in the ring. I don't know why he's never held belts before uh, with this character. I think I could see him as an Intercontinental Champion. I could see him as a U.S. Champion. I could see him go against Daniel Bryan in a great match, man. I, I think those two would tear the fucking house down wherever they... Uh, you know, place that match on the card. If they want to do it on pay-per-view, or Monday Night Raw, or SmackDown, that would be an excellent match. I think Fandango is very underrated. I think Fandango would make a great IC champion or a US champion. He just needs the WWE Universe to get behind him. He needs the WWE to get behind him and give him that push and believe in the character and believe in the individual, the wrestler, the superstar. That is Johnny Curtis, man. He's got a great look. He's got great ring skills. I like him. I like him. You know, you know. I, I think he could go places if WWE, like I said, gives him that push. Hopefully. Now, WWE utilizes him to his full potential, and we get just another piece to the puzzle, the mid-card puzzle, in WWE, man. I think he would fit in very well with a Ziggler and a Sheamus and a Bryan and a Barrett and an Ambrose 
etc., etc. So good things are looking up. Uh, things are looking good, I should say, for Mr. Johnny Curtis, a.k.a. Fandango. Now, I mentioned to you guys, a Russian chain match at Extreme Rules will take place between Rusev and John Cena. All right, that was announced on the April 13th edition of Monday Night Raw. What the fuck is a Russian chain match? Well, per WWE.com, here are the rules of said match. Adding insult to injury, Lana then revealed... That she had successfully negotiated the terms, uh, the new terms of the previously announced match, which will see Rusev and John Cena teethered at the wrist by the length of a heavy duty chain, living up to Extreme Rules' reputation. Both superstars will be allowed to use the chain at their discretion, whether using it as a whip or to add weight to a punch, as Rusev demonstrated on Monday Night Raw. Cena recently teased on Instagram that he may be bringing back his old-school spinner United States Championship belt, which he used during his Doctor of Thugonomics gimmick earlier in his career. So, pretty much what a Russian chain match is, is a traditional strap match, but instead of using leather, they're using steel. So, that is what's going on with their United States Championship match at Extreme Rules. And finally, before I end this week's Part 1, of off the script this is very exciting news for me because i'm a fucking huge fan of his and i can't wait to see this act on the main roster finn Balor, one of nxt's hottest young superstars may be making his debut on wwe's main roster in the very and i stress that word very near future according to a report by pwinsider.com wwe officials had discussions over bringing both Baylor and Adrian Neville, now simply known as Neville, to the main roster as recent as WrestleMania 31 week. Neville made his debut on Monday Night Raw the night after WrestleMania 31, leading many to believe that Baylor won't be that far behind. If this is true, Baylor would leave NXT without a championship reign. Current NXT champion Kevin Owens is expected to have a lengthy run with the gold that isn't expected to end anytime soon. Baylor is currently overseas with WWE for its tour of the United Kingdom. With both Raw and SmackDown being taped at the O2 Arena in London, perhaps Baylor will show up on one of those two shows. That is what I got for you. I can't wait to see Finn Baylor on WWE television, man. He's my favorite act by far in NXT. I can't wait to see what they do with him. And all the new blood seeping its way into the main roster of WWE, man, really, really spells good things coming, hopefully, for WWE. But right now, I gotta, I gotta admit it, man, I'm really not that into the product like I was following WrestleMania. WrestleMania 31 was magnificent, man, and I, I'm gonna say it every time I mention it. It was a great fucking show for all wrestling fans that watched that night, man. Four hours of quality fucking entertainment the night after. The crowd was great. We got the debut of the Lucha Dragons on Monday Night Raw. The crowd was hot. We got that Monday Night Raw vibe. And now all of a sudden going into Extreme Rules, there's that WrestleMania fucking drunken phase, man. It's like the hangover phase. Nobody gives a shit. Storylines are lazy. Creative writing is lazy. Uh, you just sense that there's nothing important. Like you can miss a show and you will not miss anything uh, newsworthy, man, or noteworthy. It, it just sucks. It's it's a shitty feeling, man. That's why I don't do Monday Night Raw reviews every week, because these shows are just not important, man. When you have shows revolving around the big show and Kane in top programs, I'm not going to be interested, man, really. Things will start picking up once we get to Money in the Bank, and then obviously towards SummerSlam, but right now, every year, it seems like, this, this April, going into Extreme Rules is just fucking boring. It's awful. Nothing exciting, there's nothing newsworthy and noteworthy to talk about. And it's just like the drunken phase, you know, coming out of WrestleMania, man. We're all excited, and then all of a sudden, WWE brings us right back down. And uh, we don't we don't give a shit what's going on on TV. That's just the way it is, and that's my opinion on that. But that's part one, guys. If you, if you did indeed uh, enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. It helps out my channel. It gets my name, my brand, and my WWE content out there. If you guys want more additional wrestling content... Joe Cronin motherfucking show, man. Go subscribe to him and go follow him on Twitter. All his social media links are down below. Joe just hit 13,100 subscribers. He's on his way to doing big, big things over there, man. So if you guys want more additional wrestling content, Joe is your fucking man. And as always, my boy, Mr. Labar, Justin Labar, Josh Eisenberg, and Brian Goolish. 
Chair Shot Reality at WrestleZone.com. My favorite talk show on the internet when it comes to professional wrestling, man. Those guys do it right and they're fucking unbelievable at what they do. Go and watch those guys at WrestleZone, Chair Shot Reality homepage and their YouTube page will be linked down below. Tell them that JD from New York sent you over there. And if you guys want more Labar, all his social media and his webpage will be linked down below as well. And remember, Wrestle Crates. You got till April 19th to sign up. April 25th is going to be the shipment of the first crate, which you will see here right on my channel. Big, big unboxing, man. It's going to be fucking awesome. Go and subscribe and tell them that JD from New York sent you over there. If you guys want to go visit their website, www.wrestlecrate.com and on Twitter at WrestleCrates, man. All their information will be linked in the description below as well. This is JD. Like I said, like the video if you did enjoy, and I will see you all on Saturday morning with part two of Off the Script. What's the top story? Might you be asking? Stone Cold Steve Austin and WWE, man. What is the real issue? Might I have the answer to that? And why is WWE sending cease and desist to Stone Cold Steve Austin? You'll find out on Saturday. Don't go anywhere. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Thank you for watching. This is JD, and I'll talk to you all very soon, man. Thank you for watching.